morning everybody we took the terrain into work today we're trying an experiment this week the wife and i we're gonna switch vehicles for the week and see how much gas we save because i drive about 50 kilometers or 30 miles into work one way each day so 100 kilometers or 60 miles every day she drives three kilometers or like one and a half almost two miles drives a lot less than I do. The pickup has a lot bigger of an engine, uses more fuel. This one's a lot better on fuel. We're going to see how much money we actually save if we switch vehicles. I'm in the process of uh, debating, doing some math, doing some calculations, and doing some sleeping on it. In the process of making a decision uh, of whether or not we should get a commuter vehicle for me. If we were to get a Chevy Spark and get about seven liters per hundred kilometers. That's about half the fuel, if not less, than what the pickup uses. For my calculations right now, the savings alone would cover the insurance of the new car and the pickup, and also give us an extra two hundred fifty to three hundred dollars extra in our savings every month. So we'd actually be making money and have another asset in the family have a third vehicle. I mean, it's a depreciating asset, yeah, but if you get it paid off right away, like these cars, they go for like ten dollars to $12,000. It's just stock, base model, as low as you can get. Just a commuter car. If we were to be able to pick up one of those, I'm thinking about it, we would actually be ahead every month and have three vehicles. So that's why we're gonna switch vehicles this week, see how much uh, this engine uses a 2.2 liter, I believe, Ecotec uh, Chevy four-cylinder or GM four-cylinder. Uh, see how much we save in this, and then we'll uh, maybe go and you know take a little Chevy Spark for a test drive, do some uh, research into it. My father-in-law works at GM, so he's got a lot of answers to our questions, and we'll see what happens. I mean, it seems like a win-win right now. We were talking about it this weekend. That's why I'm bringing it up now. It seems like a win-win. Extra asset plus extra money. So you actually make money buying a car. It's thinking about it. It's on my mind. So this week we're going to switch vehicles, see what happens. And uh, we'll probably talk more about this next year, 2022, in the new year. And see what happens. No rash decisions, no quick movements. Just take our time. Because the pickup is paid off, the terrain is paid off. I mean, we can get a Chevy Spark, then it'll be paid off. Relatively quickly, if not right away. And I'd be saving, well, what did I estimate again? Just on tires alone, I'd be saving only fifteen hundred bucks a year because the tires on my pickup are thirty-six hundred dollars. They're they're not exactly the cheapest tires, but I like them. Tires on just a commuter car, they don't have to be fancy. It just has to be filled with air. It's like five hundred bucks for a set of tires. So I'm saving over a thousand dollars a year just on tires on a commuter car. I'd be saving uh, fifty, about two to three hundred dollars a month on fuel, maintenance, oil changes. I'd be saving for the first two years that have full warranty on everything on a new little car. And if you pay it out right, as quickly as possible, if not like right off the bat, just paid off, you don't pay a lot of interest. That's where they'll get you. They'll get you with the interest, right? So I'm going to try to avoid paying the interest and just pay it off either right off the bat when we take it home or as quickly as possible like after that. We'll see. We'll think about that later. Right now we're going to think about trucking. It's Monday morning. Happy Monday. We're in the truck. We have no assignment yet, but one is coming down the pike pretty soon. Obviously, getting another vehicle is a big decision. It's not something I just want to jump into right away. Though I am sharing it with you now because the, the idea of it looks promising, right? It looks like in the long term we could save money. And with it being a new car, like I said, I have two years of commuting to work worry-free. It'd be in, all under warranty. By that time, that car would be long paid off. If we can't pay it off right away, but our first priority right now is our IVF treatment uh, that we're going through that, well, my wife is going to have to go through. We're going to be starting that hopefully in February. We're actually going in for our preliminary 
uh, meetings and stuff about it in January next month, 2022. And we're hoping to get this procedure underway in February. We're able to get it going uh, a few months earlier than we expected, and we're very happy about that. Uh, we're, we've gotten ourselves into a very good spot financially, and uh, I think we're ready. I think we'll be ready end of January. So, I mean, getting a new vehicle isn't really high on the priority list right now. I just mentioned it now for something to talk about because I took the terrain in uh, to work today. We're just going to see if I can save some money driving this vehicle for a while. But, you know, maybe towards spring or summer, we'll see. We'll start talking about it more seriously. Do a lot of our homework before then. And if all my calculations are right, I mean, why not, right? Why not? We get ourselves ahead. The maintenance on a pickup truck is very expensive. The oil changes I have to do every two and a half months. Uh, tires are very expensive. I have to change those every two years with all the commuting I do. Uh, the gas is obviously getting more and more expensive. They keep raising the prices higher and higher. And, uh, you know, maintenance is expensive on a pickup. The suspension components, the shocks, the ball bearings, uh, the, the, the U-joints, everything on there that wears out over time is way more expensive to fix than if it was on a tiny little commuter car. We'll see what happens, but first, our first priority financially is this uh, IVF that we're gonna be going through early next year in 2022. So we'll focus on that first. This is, I, I just bring this up now just because it's on my mind. We'll, we'll see what happens. Time to get started. So we've got a, 53 foot flat roll tight here hooked on Ugh. gonna do the walk around on this yet I forget this landing gear up fill it up with air make sure there's no leaks make sure all the tires are good make sure all the lights work and we're gonna pull this thing up to Arburg it's two hours north of here gonna load it up with a load that's going to Tampa Bay Florida southern states I notice a lot of drivers have like plastic coil hoses here their airlines and those snap in cold weather they're no good up here gotta have these rubber lines okay all of our lights on let's go make sure everything's working let's uh, make sure our brakes are working as well Hook our trailer brakes there on that. All right, so now our brake lights should be on. All of our signals should be flashing. Our marker lights should be on. Marker lights and signals. Tires, you know, I should have made sure these tires were not flat before I rolled the landing gear up. So that would have been a waste of time. This is in here correctly. Brake lights are engaged. Signals, license plate light. Did any of you catch what I forgot to do before I did my walk around on here? If you answered, I forgot to fill the trailer with air so that I could listen for air leaks, you would be correct. So I'm gonna go back to the truck now, fill the trailer with air and then listen for any air leaks and make sure that uh, the airbags are inflating. Don't need this anymore then. Put that in there. Okay. So the air is flowing through that red line right now. There's no air leaks here, that's good. Just make our way to the back. Listening for air leaks along here. Seems like we're doing good. 
The airbags are not inflated yet, but they should be inflating soon, as soon as the trailer uh, air compression goes up. You can see under there, there's no air in there yet, but they should be filling up soon. There we go. You hear that? There. Watch that airbag. See how it's lifting up? Now I'm gonna move away from it just in case if it uh, is faulty and blows up. You don't wanna be right there. You don't want one of those to blow up in your face. Okay, the trailer's lifting up. See that? So it looks like we're all good. And I don't hear any air leaks. Fantastic. Good. We're all good to go. I've already checked the trailer, it's empty. But uh, for your benefit, we'll go in there and check it again. Just to double, triple check to make sure I'm not gonna pull a load down there or up there. Don't wanna show up there with a loaded trailer. There we go, see, empty. It'd be kind of a waste of my time and waste of fuel if I drive all the way up there with a loaded trailer. Can't put a load on top of a load. So, in a few hours there will be freight in here and this trailer will be on a track to Tampa Bay, Florida. I hope it brings me back a palm tree. Lucky trailer gets to go and sit in the sun for a few days. I gotta stay up here in the cold. Let's get going. Off we go. Turn left. What do you think I'm doing? First I have to turn right though. I think she knows everything. It's a little bit chilly out there today, but you know, it's not that bad. A month ago, I would say it's freezing, but my body's finally climatizing. It's finally getting used to this cold weather, and now this is just a normal day. It's about minus 20 outside today. Two hours north. See how cold it is up there. They usually, they're usually just a couple of degrees colder and they got a little bit more snow than we do. Just a little bit. Let's get across here and get onto the highway. I don't see any vehicles coming. Fantastic. exactly the same but you know what I mean daylight hours have gotten longer as of December 21st we're finally on the way back to the summer solstice this is a much better part of the year all right we're all tied up here didn't use the whole trailer I thought it was gonna be a full load better close this up and get in trouble if I leave that open on the road there you go. Yeah, the weather's actually not bad today. As long as you dress for it, it's actually not bad at all. I got lined jeans on right now. 
And if the line jeans, uh, if the line jeans aren't uh, warm enough, I have the uh, overalls that I put up, that I put over this yet, that I can wear if it gets even colder. But really, it's not that bad. My body's gotten used to the cold weather now. It's just like the first month of cold weather where you're just, uh, everything feels so chilly and so freezing cold. Not for that, it's fine. Let's see if I can close this thing now. I might need to climb up there. This thing was giving me problems before. I didn't have to undo the back at all, so don't have to worry about that. Just gotta get this thing closed. I had a little bit of a difficult time opening it because the wheels, are, they're not stuck, they're greased. They're just frozen. <laughs> so, see if I can do it from this side. Okay, there we go, there we go. That's, we got momentum. Come on, we gotta bring it all the way up there. Come on, come on. Oh, oh, I'm losing traction. Ow, oh, and that's lost traction. Close. I'm gonna put you guys down. I need two hands for this. It's the other side. The other side is stuck now. Everything's cold, everything's frozen, but we're having fun. Can't stop me from having fun. Come on. Come on. There we go. Oh, geez. What's going on here? What's going on here? We're moving a little bit by a little bit. Okay, here. One second. Guys, stay there. usually allowed to bring weapons to work but I snuck these babies in don't tell anybody
felt so weird taking the terrain to work today. We're gonna try this for the week. So far, it looks like I'm going to save over 50 bucks a week in gas. It's like 200 bucks a month if we switch vehicles. But then again, her gas will go up, but she only goes like two kilometers a day, so a tank of gas will last her all months. Or all month. Um, so I don't know. I missed my pickup. I kind of just want to jump back in it because I like driving it a lot better. And she likes this vehicle a lot better too. This is sort of like, they're both our vehicles, but this one's sort of hers. She keeps it nice and clean the way she likes it. And you know, it's, it's the vehicle she picked out. It's, it's, it's her terrain. She really likes this vehicle and I'm, I like the pickup. That's the one I usually drive is my pickup. So we might just switch back. I don't know. <laughs> Probably switch back tomorrow. I want my pick. I miss my pickup. But those savings are tempting. But what's the point of picking out the vehicle you want to drive if you don't even get to drive it, right? She went and picked out that terrain herself. And I picked out the pickup myself so that I could drive the pickup. And she picked that one so she could drive that one. Oh, now we're not even going to get to drive the vehicles we picked out for ourselves? But is it worth 50 bucks a week just to be in a vehicle that you wanted? I think it is. I don't know, we've been doing it this long. Uh, I don't know. Uh. <laughs> I gotta let the dogs out here. I had to, uh, I have to park our vehicle on the end of our driveway because where, where we are in town, people like to use our driveway to turn around in. And that's very annoying, more annoying than what it usually would be for other people because no one likes people turning around in their driveway. Uh, because uh, I have to maintain that as my driveway wearing down my driveway first of all and second of all our dogs go nuts every time someone turns into our driveway to turn around and it happens so often in the evenings. so I just started when I got home or when I get home I just park our vehicle down at the end of the driveway to stop people from doing that like even if people use our neighbors driveway to turn around and our dogs go nuts so if I could stop them from doing that too I would do that but at least I can control this one so I park our, our vehicle right at the end of the driveway so no one can use it to turn around. It's our driveway. Stop using our driveway to turn around, people. There's so many streets all around here. Just use the streets. They're, they're public streets. This is a private driveway. I know it's a little silly and petty, but... It's the way I'm doing it. Following through. Stop using my driveway. So I'll have to talk about it with Britt when she gets home. She's supposed to get off work in about 45 minutes. Maybe she'll, she might get off a little early. Sometimes she does. I miss my pickup. I was gonna, we we're gonna at least try this for a week. I don't know if I'm gonna last the whole week. It's not that I don't like her terrain. Like the terrain's a great vehicle. It's actually, I call it a spaceship. There's so many buttons on the dash. I don't know what to do with myself. I, I, it took me forever to figure out how to hook up my Bluetooth phone to it so I could listen to my Joe Rogan podcast on the way into work. Once I finally got that hooked up, and then I guess I pressed the wrong button for the vents, because the, the windshield and windows started fogging up. And then I realized that the air had somehow gotten on to recirculate, and I didn't want it to recirculate. I wanted outside air coming in to unfog the air, I mean unfog the windows, and I wanted it on to defrost, so I was blowing on the windshield and the, and the windows. Oh boy, you gotta know like Morse code to try to like push all the right buttons in the right order to try to get what you want done, done. That car, the thing has a mind of its own. I like it though. It's very fancy. It's a fancy vehicle. Britt picked it. It was her favorite one and she loves it. So it's her fancy terrain. And I feel unworthy to be in it because I can't even figure out how to work the vents and the Bluetooth. My pickup's so much easier. It's just because I have everything hooked up in my pickup already. I just get in the car and it's like, oh, hey, it's you again. Here, you want to listen to Joe Rogan? Here, let me start that for you. The only thing it doesn't do is turn the volume down when I forget to turn it down the day before. And then, you know, it starts blasting music at me first thing in the morning. And I got to tell, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm not, I'm not the man I was last night. I'm not in a party mood. Oh, it's morning time. And that's, that's the only thing. I wish it uh, would automatically turn the volume down like some of the newer fancy vehicles. I think the train does that. And, and the train also has heated seats. That was nice. That, that's nice heated seats my next vehicle will probably not have heated seats because we're talking about getting the spark right and that's going to be base of the base model it's probably going to have crank windows do they even make those still 
I don't know, but if I'm base of the base. It's going to be a base, base model. Take the base model and then make it more base. Base model. We'll see. We'll see if it's worth it in the end. I'm going to do more calculations, more thinking. Thanks for watching today, everybody. And uh, leave your opinions down below in the comment section. I've already decided it would be a Chevy Spark, okay? Uh, I'm a Chevy guy, so that's what it's going to be. Uh, my father-in-law was... Uh, said that there's also the Chevy Sonic, but now nah, I want the Spark. If if I'm going to get a commuter car, it's got to be worth it. It's got to be a little, I'm going to call it the go-kart or the death trap, whatever. We'll think about it. We'll give it a few months and see what happens. Let me know what you think down below. I'll see you tomorrow, though.